Good morning. Welcome to this service of worship. Thank you for being here today and thank you for making worship a priority. If you will, please pass your attendance pads down the pew and let everybody sign those so that we'll have a record of your being here today. Just a few highlights of announcements. Remember that this afternoon is our Who's on the Couch women's event at 5.30 in the Ministry Center. So we're excited about that. There is a literal couch in my car right now uh, that we've got to get out and put in over there at the Ministry Center. So uh, it's going to be a great event for our women tonight. Also this Tuesday morning at 1030, there's another opportunity for women to gather in Bible study. Uh, Suzanne McCluskey will be leading that discussion this Tuesday morning at 1030 in room 110. Uh, The New Beginnings ladies group will be gathering there. So a lot of exciting things happening in our church and a lot of exciting things uh, that you can take part in. A lot of it's listed there in the bulletin, so please be sure to check that out. And let me offer a word of prayer now as we continue in our service of worship. God, we welcome your Holy Spirit here among us. We thank you for the opportunity and the privilege of gathering together as a body of believers. And we pray, Lord, that everything we do and say and sing will give honor and glory to you, Lord Jesus. You are the reason we're here. We lift this in your holy and precious name. Amen. Please turn in your hymnals to number 103. 103, immortal, invisible, God only wise, and you're invited to stand as we sing together. standing as we affirm our faith in Jesus Christ by reciting the historic Apostles' Creed found in your order of worship. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead, He ascended into heaven and And sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen.
may be seated. In light of today being the 21st anniversary of 9-11, I just wanted to highlight for you the words to this morning's anthem that are in the music box in your bulletin.
Please join me now in a word of prayer. Dear Father in heaven, thank you for this day and the opportunity to once again join together in this beautiful sanctuary as your church, united in worship, praising the one and only God of all creation. We recognize your power, your goodness, your authority over all things. We feel your mighty presence, the Holy Spirit moving among us. Father, we know you are working in this church. It is so clear that you have a great plan for St. Luke, and we ask that you continue revealing yourself to us. Help us discern your desires for us so that we may be in the exact center of your will. Father, we pray that you will continue to show us as a body of believers how we can be your hands and feet in this broken world and show each of us individually as your children how we can serve you, serve one another and serve this church. Enable us to be active participants in this partnership with you that we call St. Luke. And as we move forward together, listening for your direction, fervently striving to discern your will, I find the words of this morning's anthem especially inspiring. I pray that as a church, we would truly be about the business of putting peace into each other's hands, that we would be tender with one another, loving in our expectations and gentle in our words and ways. Father, I pray for this church that we would treasure one another as fellow believers and brothers and sisters of Christ. Help us to share hope and joy with one another and gladly serve this world that we are part of. And though we may not all do great things, surely, surely we can all do small things with great love. Oh, Father, we need love and peace so badly in this world. Today, as we remember the tragedy of 9-11, 21 years later, we are still praying for peace. Lessons that we should have learned as a result of 9-11 go ignored. Hate is rampant, anger boils over, your church is under attack, the foundational truths of your scripture are discredited and disbelieved. Yet we are reminded that the world has been like this since the fall of man in the garden when we brought sin into your pristine creation. Peace will not come to the world again until Christ returns and he will return, hallelujah, and how we long for that day. But thankfully, personal peace can be realized here and now because Jesus has told us, these things I have spoken to you, that in me you may have peace. Oh, Father, thank you that the future does not hinge on the world situation, however grim it might become. It depends solely on what each of us does about Jesus Christ. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. And I pray the same for St. Luke Church, that we will serve the Lord. This morning, the words of St. Francis come to mind, though not scripture, surely divinely inspired. And I pray this would be the attitude of each of us here today. Lord, make us instruments of your peace. Where there is hatred, let us so love. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there is doubt, faith. Where there is despair, hope where there is darkness, light, where there is sadness, joy. Grant that we may not so much seek to be consoled as to console, to be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love. For it is in giving that we receive, it is in pardoning that we are pardoned, and it is in dying that we are born to eternal life. And finally this morning, we also pray the peace-giving words of Jesus when he said, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever.
tonight, and now we invite our children to come forward and join Miss Jessica here on the steps for the children's sermon. Good morning. Good morning. How are you? So a couple weeks ago, we were talking about listening to God. How we can hear God when we read his word, when we pray. And I got me thinking, is listening enough? Is it enough just to listen to what God has to say. So I thought we would see what God's Word says. If you'll read with me in James chapter 1, starting in verse 22, but be doers of the Word and not hearers only, deceiving yourselves. For if anyone is a hearer of the Word and does not a doer, He is like a man observing his natural face in a mirror, for he observes himself, goes away, and immediately forgets what kind of man he was. So the Bible is saying to us that it's like if we were to see the Bible as a mirror, and the Bible is telling us to treat others with kindness, to love others, to obey our parents, to not steal, to not cheat, to not um, do things that would hurt others. And yet, what if we just closed the Bible and that that was it? We didn't actually treat others with kindness and we didn't carry ourselves differently. Um, Another example I have for us this morning, one that I have seen demonstrated, is what does this look like? Can you tell me? Milk. It looks like just plain old milk. But guess what? Before I got out here, I added some yummy chocolate syrup. So if I could get you to help me, if this glass is like us, we're the, we're the milk, and we pour God's goodness into ourselves, and we let his grace and his mercy and his love into our hearts, but we don't let it change us. We're, we're going to just taste like milk, and when other people see us, we're going to look like milk too, Right? But if we let the Holy Spirit stir up inside of us, we get chocolate milk. So, you see, it's not just important to hear God's Word. It's also important for us to let those words change us, not only so that others might see, but so that we can be changed. Let's go to God in prayer this morning. Dear God, thank you so much for loving us. Thank you for all of your many blessings. Lord, we pray that you would just help us as we go throughout this week to remember that you don't want us just to hear what you have to say, that you want us to let those words that love your grace, your mercy, change us, that you want it to be stirred up inside of us. Lord, we ask that you would just go with us throughout the rest of this week, that we would shine our light for you and show others that there is something different about us. Thank you for loving us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Please turn in your hymnals to number 66. Number 66, praise my soul, the King of heaven, and you're invited to stand as we sing together.
and your ties. Father, we just ask that you be here among us, that you work in our hearts, give us uh, the spirit to give back everything that belongs to you generously and that lavishly and use these gifts for your church, for this church, for your kingdom in this world. Amen. Our scripture focus this morning is from Paul's letter to Timothy, the second letter of Timothy. Uh, it's believed that this is perhaps the last writing of Paul. It's one of his latest writings, if not the last. He's writing to Timothy as his mentee and, and giving him some instructions. So Paul writes to Timothy, 2 Timothy chapter 3, verses 14 through 17. Paul says, but as for you... Continue in what you have learned and have become convinced of, because you know those from whom you learned it, and how from infancy you have known the holy scriptures, which are able to make you wise for salvation through faith in Jesus Christ. All scripture is God-breathed and is useful for teaching, for rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness so that the servant of God may be thoroughly equipped for every good work. This is the word of God for the people of God, and we say, thanks be to God. You may be seated. And let's pray. God, we thank you so much for your holy word. We thank you for its power to connect us to the stories of our faith. And God, I thank you that we can apply it to our lives. So bring it to life for us today so that we might not only hear, but we move to respond as you lead us. And we ask this in your holy and precious name. Amen. Well, over the next four weeks, I want us to focus on and wrestle with a question. And that is, why Sunday school? Why Sunday school? A lot of modern churches today don't even have Sunday school. 
and yet they're booming. So, is Sunday school still needed? Is it important? Is it still relevant? Or has it run its course? These are questions that I hope we will come to an agreement on over the next few weeks, and that is, at least for St. Luke, yes, Sunday school is vitally important. Sunday school is still relevant. Sunday school is a ministry worth putting our time and effort into. And I hope that you will come to agree with me if you don't already agree with me on this question. So today I ask, why Sunday school? And the first topic is the B-I-B-L-E, the Bible. Sunday school is where we learn the basics of our faith. Sunday school is where we learn the scriptures. Sunday school is where we learn the books of the Bible and how to memorize those. As our scripture today says, all scripture is God-breathed, and it is useful for teaching, for rebuking, for correcting, and for training in righteous living. So why Sunday school? Because that's where we learn the basics of our faith, the basics of the Bible. So let's pick apart those four words that it shares with us today. The Bible is useful for teaching. Now, Sunday school was begun in the 1780s in England, and it was started by a group of Christian philanthropists who literally started a Sunday school. Children in England during that time were working somewhere like 12 hours a day, Monday through Saturday. So there was no time for children to get an education. There was no time for them to go to school. They were working all day long. And so these Christian philanthropists started a school on Sunday to teach children basic things like how to read, how to write life lessons, life skills, and they used as their textbook the B-I-B-L-E. So they taught children to read by reading scripture. They taught children to write by having them write out scriptures. They taught them memorization by having them memorize passages of scripture. And wouldn't you know it, by doing that, they were also teaching them the principles of our faith. They were teaching them core values. They were teaching them the ways of Christ. And in doing all of that, a beautiful thing happened. Children began to learn, I can be more than a a 12-hour-a-day mill worker. I can be a minister of the gospel of Jesus Christ. I can be someone who shares the good news of Jesus in my life. And so, as you can imagine, Sunday school started to take off in the 1800s. It began to grow and spread like wildfire. It spread into into America into the 1900s. Sunday school was very popular, and it became a disciple-making machine where people were coming to learn the basics of the faith. They were learning the basics of Scripture, and then they were becoming teachers themselves, learning to teach others the basics of the faith and the basics of Scripture. So first and foremost, Sunday school is important because it is there that we are taught the basics of our faith. It's in Sunday school that, at least for me, I learned Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. I remember I was blessed to grow up with parents who took me to Sunday school and church from the time I was literally in my mother's womb, and so I grew up coloring pictures of Jonah and the whale. I grew up coloring pictures of the ark and the animals and learning, you know, two by two. I learned in there that Jesus died for my sins on a cross. 
I was blessed to learn the basics of the faith from a very young age. I think about going to Sunday school right here in Columbus, Georgia, when my dad was the pastor at St. Andrew United Methodist Church, and Miss Becky was my Sunday school teacher, Miss Becky Robinson, if anybody ever knew Becky Robinson. She was my elementary school Sunday school teacher. Great, great days of my life where I learned the basics of the faith. But I want to encourage our adult Sunday school classes now Today, here at St. Luke, I want to encourage all of you to have a Back to the Basics series maybe once a year. Have a time in the year where your Sunday school class does some Bible drills. Have a time, make it fun. Have a contest where you memorize scripture and see who can recite the most memorized Bible verses. Memorize the books of the Bible. Make it fun, make it a contest, but go back to the basics in your Sunday school class And here's why that's so important. Not everybody has had the privilege of growing up in church like I have. Not everybody has been taught the scriptures from a young age. And so I believe, I feel certain there are many adults who sit in Sunday school class who don't know these stories of our faith, but they're too embarrassed to say, you know what, I don't know all of these I don't know how to find the Old Testament book of Habakkuk. But if we have a Back to the Basics series in Sunday school, using the Bible as our primary teaching source, that is a great opportunity to teach people, again, the basics of the faith, the basics of Scripture. I would encourage all of our adult classes to have that time so that others can come to know this as well and get excited about it. Because once you start learning the Bible, it is exciting. You want more and more of it. It is a useful tool for teaching. The scripture also says that the Bible is there for rebuking. Rebuking is simply correcting false teaching. So the Bible is useful for correcting teaching that is not true. And so in a world in which we live where there's so much talk out there about what the world should be or what the world is supposed to be or what the world is becoming, we come back to Sunday school to open God's word and to ask ourselves, what's the truth? What's the Bible saying? How is the Bible addressing these issues. Let us wrestle with that. Maybe the Bible is not talking about that. What does that tell us? The Bible is useful for teaching and for rebuking, for correcting false teaching. And so Paul writes to Timothy and he says, continue in what you have learned and how from childhood you have known the sacred writings that are able to instruct you for salvation through Jesus Christ. In other words, hold on to what you know. Hold on to your core beliefs. Hold on to the truth that you have learned through reading the scriptures. Don't let any modern day teaching pull you off from center. Come back to the truth. And Sunday school gives us an opportunity to do that with fellow believers. It gives us a place to come back to correct false teaching, to get our minds back in line with the mind of Christ. And so that leads to the next point. Scripture is useful for teaching, for rebuking, for correcting. Correcting means getting our lives back on track, getting our lives back on the path of Jesus Christ. Sunday school is a beautiful place where we can come together with other believers and make sure that our lives are on track with the teachings of Christ. Sunday school is a great place where we can open up and be honest with each other and with fellow believers. It's a place of correcting and setting ourselves back on a right path. Laura and I have seen this in our ministry over the last 27 years. We've seen it time and time again that oftentimes somebody in a Sunday school class makes a bad choice or bad choices and that person gets out of line, they, they make mistakes, they find themselves in a lost foreign land, but it is oftentimes two or three or four people in their Sunday school class who rally around them. Typically, it's not the pastor who brings them back. It is those members of their Sunday school class who rally around them, who walk with them through this tough time, and who help to point them back 
to Scripture, who help to get them back on the right path. Scripture is useful for teaching, rebuking, and correcting. And Sunday school is a beautiful model where we can do that. And then notice it says Scripture is useful for training in righteousness. Training in righteousness. We go to Sunday school in order to be trained in the ways of Jesus Christ and how to walk in his righteousness. We're all, of course, thinking about perhaps mourning the loss of Queen Elizabeth this week. We've all been inundated with information about that. So I read an article in a Christian magazine about Queen Elizabeth, and it was saying that um, many years ago, Queen Elizabeth was in chapel, and one of her chaplains that day was preaching on the second coming of Christ. And this article said that Queen Elizabeth was enamored by this teaching on that particular day, and so she invited the chaplain to come and to sit with her after the service. And so the chaplain came and sat with Queen Elizabeth and asked, well, your majesty, what, what enthralled you about the sermon today? And she said, oh, I just wish that Jesus would return in my lifetime. And the chaplain reportedly pressed her a little bit and said, well, your majesty, why is that so important to you? Why would you like to see that? And she reportedly said, I wish that Jesus would come back in my lifetime so that I might lay my crown at his feet. Sunday school is where we learn those core values that it's not about us. It's not about any earthly accolades that we might achieve. It doesn't matter how high we climb up the ladder. If our faith is not in Christ, we're dead in the water. We're dead in our trespasses. It's in Sunday school that we are trained in righteous living. And righteous living means, first and foremost, I lay my life at your feet, Lord Jesus. I am nothing without you. And so reportedly, Queen Elizabeth went on to say, to what greater inspiration and counsel can we turn than to the imperishable truth that is found in the treasure trove known as the Bible? To what greater truth can we turn than the words of God himself? All scripture is God breathed. And I believe that means that God's Holy Spirit inspired human beings to write down these stories of our faith so that we would have them for generations to come and praise God that we have that. So Sunday school offers us a beautiful opportunity to be trained in righteous living. In one of our former churches, a couple in their 60s took it upon themselves to start a young adult Sunday school class. And so this couple in their 60s started a young adult class primarily focused on 20-somethings, and the class began with a few young couples. There were a few singles, but they were primarily young couples, and this 60-something-year-old couple, they poured into these 20-somethings. It was a beautiful ministry to watch. They invited them to their house on a regular basis. They took them on social gatherings, but on Sunday morning, they taught them the word of God and they poured into these young people and the young people were just soaking it up like a sponge. And that class continued to grow and grow to the point they had to add more and more chairs. They almost outgrew their room. It was a great ministry that was going on there because this older couple was putting their time and their efforts pouring into these younger couples. Well, along the path of that class, one of the young couples in the class went through a horrible divorce. It was ugly and people were divided on both sides, even within the class. It caused tension and stress in the class. But this 60-year-old couple, they kept pouring into those young people kept walking with them, kept trying to hold them all together. And in the midst of that trying time over the divorce, the young woman in the couple that was getting divorced, the young woman developed a terminal brain tumor. So now she was not only faced with this ugly divorce, she had two small children, and now she was told, you're probably not going to live, but, you know, six or eight months. 
And so the couple who were leading the Sunday school class, they invited us, they invited me and Laura one Sunday morning. They said, we want you to come to Sunday school. We want you to be with us. We're going to pray over Karen this week. So we went to that Sunday school class. I didn't know what to expect. I went up there kind of thinking, well, this is just going to be a sob fest. And this is, I I don't know how this is going to go. But we got up there to that Sunday school class. And as we walked in, I saw young adults sitting with their Bibles in hand. And as we all gathered, we circled around Karen. And for 45 minutes, I witnessed these young adults praying scripture over Karen. They all had highlighted specific passages that they wanted to pray over her that day. I didn't have to say a word because the word of God was speaking in and through them. That was a beautiful example of how people were trained in righteous living through a Sunday school class. And in a moment of crisis, in a time of trial, they knew what to do. They started praying the words of Scripture over Karen. I wish I could say that Karen survived that. She did not. She lived about six or eight more months and passed away. But I saw such a beautiful ministry happening. And in those six or eight months, Karen knew that she was being prayed for. She knew that she was loved by her Sunday school class. And she knew that the words of the scriptures were being poured over her and into her. Sunday school is vitally important because it is in Sunday school that the word of God comes to life. It's where the word of God is put into practice It's where the Word of God meets us on our journey of life. It's where the Word of God convicts us. It's where the Word of God sustains us. It's where the Word of God upholds us and moves us through some things. It is in Sunday school that the Word of life comes to life. And so, again, I encourage our Sunday school classes, go back to the basics. Be sure to stick to the teachings of the Word of God. Be sure to use the Bible to rebuke and to correct false teaching. Be sure to use the Word of God to correct and bring those brothers and sisters in Christ who have wandered back into the fold of God. You know, I think we do ourselves a disservice on Sunday morning because we put on our Sunday best, we walk into the church, we look at each other, we say, hey, how are y'all doing? We're great. How are y'all? We're good too. Good to see you. Good to see you. But where is the place where we're able to say, you know, I'm not great. I'm really not great. I feel like my life is coming unraveled. Where is that? Sunday school is a great place to start. Sunday school is intended to be that place where we can be ourselves. It's intended to be that place where we can bear our souls. It's intended to be that place where we can be open and honest with each other and have other believers walk along beside us and say, you know what, I'm not that great either, but let's walk through this together. Let's do it together. Let's pray together. Let's read scripture together. Let's encourage one another through this. Yes, Sunday school is vitally important, and it all begins with the B-I-B-L-E. I hope that you will take this challenge over the next few weeks to reinvigorate your Sunday school class, help your class to grow deeper, Come back to the words of Scripture if, you've, if you're not there. Use this as a time for teaching and rebuking and correcting and training in righteousness. Let us pray. God, we thank you for your holy word. I thank you for its power to guide us, to convict us, to correct us, and most of all, its power to train us. Lord, may we all live our lives in such a way that we are prepared at a moment's notice to pour Scripture into someone else. May we internalize your word so wholeheartedly that, we are, that it flows out of us as easily as our breath flows. Lord, you are the very breath that we breathe. You are our everything, God. We thank you and we praise you for your holy word. And it is in your name that we pray. Amen.
If you would like to unite with our church today, I'd love to welcome you as a member of St. Luke. You just come forward during our closing hymn and I'll welcome you here. If you'd like to come and kneel at the altar, the altar is always open for that as well. Please turn in your hymnals to number 98. 98, to God be the glory, and you're invited to stand as we sing together. preach right there. Great things he hath done. So let us go forth in that celebration in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And may God empower you today and forevermore.